July 17, 2017, meeting of Anne Arundel County Council is now in session. Please stand for invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Peruca has the invocation. Mr. Peruca. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let's pray. Let us pray. Lord, we, we know that you superintend all things. We ask you to superintend this meeting of the Anne Arundel County Council so that uh, the you, we would, uh, you, you would put your thoughts in our hearts and your words on our lips so that we would think your thoughts and say your words after you, that we, would, uh, that we would follow your will. We know, Lord, that you have told us what to do. You have given us things to do that we have not done. You've told us things to not do that we have done. And we repent of that, Lord, and we, uh, like our founders, uh, the founders of Maryland, and acknowledged in the very first sentence of our Constitution, where they acknowledged your authority over, over all matters. Uh, we do so as well, and we ask your blessing on this meeting. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I can take this golden opportunity to introduce myself. My name is John Grasso. On behalf of myself and staff and the entire council, but most of all, on behalf of the people of Anne Arundel County, I'd like to welcome everyone to tonight's meeting. And I, as always, sincerely hope and trust that you find a humorous one and possibly a very informative one with that being said. Okay, uh, Madam Secretary, you want to please read the ethics statement? The Ethics Commission is asked that I advise you that under certain circumstances, members of the public may qualify as lobbyists when they testify before the County Council. If so, the law requires that certain information be filed with the Ethics Commission. The Chairman of the Ethics Commission is asked that those present review the Ethics Commission information in the foyer of these chambers. If there are any questions about lobbying requirements, speakers should contact the Ethics Commission in the Heritage Office Complex on Reaver Road. All right. Let's see, we're on a part. Was anyone in the audience who would like to address the council briefly on any subject not on the printed agenda? We ask you to keep your remarks to two minutes and please state your name and address. I want to call up um, Ms. Pam Brown, um, who's the executive director of the local uh, meeting board. Come on down, grab a mic. I'll fire you on up if you want to stand up. There you go, you're live. Thank you. Good evening, Councilman Grasso and Councilman. I'm here tonight as part of County Executive Shoes efforts to address the heroin crisis. My agency, the Partnership for Children, Youth and Families, we, yes, we are the local management board, have three strategies that I want to talk to you about tonight. The first one is that we ha are working with a subcommittee of the Clergy Advisory Board to try to craft a message specifically that the clergy themselves and their youth leaders can use to talk to parents and youth. And part of that is is that piece when a young person has a sports injury and the parents have to go with their child to the doctor or the child is in hospital, really working with parents to talk about how you talk to a doctor about prescription drugs, how you ask them what the different alternatives are, how long they should be on that drug, etc. So that's very much part of our messaging. Our second piece is that we're really recruiting youth to be part of the messaging, both in that committee and in all the work that we do in the partnership. And finally, for this year, for the first time, we are not just a grantee, we receive lots and lots of grants, but we're also a grantor. And for every one of our grants, every contract will specify that our grantees must have heroin training uh, for all of their staff must have an opioid message of part of the work that they do and must outreach to all of the people and the children, the families that they serve around the message that we're using inside the county. It's that idea of consistency of message and ensuring that everyone delivers the same message. Do you have any questions? No. Nope. Pretty good. Okay. Anybody from council? All right. Well, thank you for coming down this evening. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Uh, Prusky. Yeah, uh, sorry to interrupt. I do want to introduce, uh, we have a guest, Colonel Ed Barrett from Senator Van Hollen's office is here. I just want to welcome him. Uh, he's here uh, just coming to the meeting, show support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel, coming out. Okay, anybody in the public want to come down? And of course, we have our regulars, Ms. Julie Johnson. How are you? And of course, I'm getting to know your address by heart, but you're going to need to say it anyway for everybody else. And thank you for coming down. Julie Johnson. 
who has recovered my PO Box 6634 Annapolis after I forgot to pay the rent on the box and they almost gave it to somebody else and wouldn't give it back to me. Ms. Johnson, <clears throat> do me a favor, pull the mic a little bit closer to you so we can hear a little bit better. Oh. Thank you, dear. Okay, Julie Johnson, PO Box 6634 Annapolis, Maryland, which I recovered after forgetting to pay the rent and they gave it to somebody else, but I got it back. Um, tonight I would like to uh, remind people that it is really important for everyone to protect their own rights by coming before the council, being aware of what le legislation is being proposed and debated and enacted and to state their position. Um, in prior meetings, I've mentioned the fact that there is at least one employee who said, we can make some of the people happy 100% of the time, excuse me, we can make some of the people happy some of the time and we can make other people 100% miserable 100% of the time. And I think that's a pretty horrible state of affairs when that's the position of public officials. And it can happen to you. You can be that person who can be made to be 100% miserable 100% of the time with virtually no respite, no relief, no help. Um, and so your best protection is you know, watch your wallet when the, when the, the, uh, the legislature is in session. Uh, there is a Shakespearean quote that I always garble, but about 30 or 40 years ago, a lot of the state employees had a, you know, had a refrigerator magnet, but essentially, no man's wallet is safe when the legislature is in session, and that'll come up later today. Um, but I'm really happy to see so many people have turned out, and I hope they keep coming because the uh, C-SPAN today broadcast a report about uh, how many people are really unhappy with their government. It doesn't matter what group you belong to, black, white, gay, straight, LGBT, you know, rich, poor, whatever, young, old, there is a great dissatisfaction and feeling the government is not representing me and it's not protecting my interests. So you need to show up, you need to ask the, these folks to, to protect the interests of all. Thanks so much. Thank Have you, a good Ms. Johnson, day. for coming out. Hey, Mr. Shea, you coming down? Yes, I am, thank you. All right, thanks for coming out this evening to see us. Come on down, anybody wants to talk to us that's not on the agenda, fill the seats. <clears throat> okay, so we'll start with Mr. Shea, you know the address and yes. you know the drill. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Grasso. Um, Mike Shea, Red Top Farm, Shady Side, West River Road, uh, Shady Side. Um, with me, I bring some of my neighbors and colleagues in a coalition that has recently formed to on an issue that is hard to understand. I mean, we all use cell towers and cell phones, but a lot has changed since this county council took it up over four years ago. If you Google on the internet the traffic and what has changed throughout the nation, uh, Prince George's County no longer allows cell phones on elementary school grounds. Montgomery County no longer allows cell phones, uh, cell towers on um, elementary school grounds. The firemen. Uh, uh, the National Labor Union no longer wants cell towers at fire stations. A lot has really changed since you considered it uh, over four years ago. And what we're here uh, tonight is some of the individuals would like to share some of their concerns, but I can tell you uh, in my years of organizing in the community, nothing has ever hit an issue has never hit as strong and as fast as this issue here of putting cell towers uh, on elementary schools. Shady Side is targeted to have one, and um, we're participating in the process of trying to join the other counties uh, in the nation to do the right thing. And um, let's err on the side of safety. We're elected to it's the number one constituent service that we provide for our citizens is safety. And safety for our children is just as important as our firefighters. And we need to uh, do what the rest of the jurisdictions have done and step up. And uh, 
I'll let, turn it loose to okay. the rest of us. Thank you. Thanks for coming out, Mr. Shea. Appreciate it, like always. Hey, how are you doing this evening? Thanks Hi. for coming to see us. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, my name is John Earl. I live on Idlewild Road in Shadyside, Maryland. <clears throat> so I come before you today to implore that we change legislation that allows the cell phone companies to build these high-powered uh, microwave antennas on elementary school grounds uh, in Anne Arundel County. As a father of five school-aged children, I am personally impacted. It's proven that children absorb more radiation than adults, and there are various health impacts. And in fact, a 2016 NIH study has led the American Academy of Pediatrics, <clears throat> excuse me, to officially recommend reducing children's exposure to RF radiation. The American Cancer Society states that it's important that the possible risk of cell phone exposure continue to be researched, especially with regard to use by children and longer term use. The truth here is nobody can say definitively that cell phone towers are safe. And if this tower goes up, my children will be exposed every day to this microwave radiation. And I personally won't let my children be the lab rats in this massive real life study. PG and Montgomery counties aren't taking that chance. And I don't think Anne Arundel County should either. Our children need to be protected. And you are the ones that can do that. Thank you. Thank you so Mr. much Chair. for coming out. Mr. Walker. What was your last name, sir? Earl. E-A-R-L-E. E-R. Earl. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry. Ma'am. Hi, I'm Jean Lessica. I'm Thanks also for coming out, Ms. Jean. Thank you, John. Um, I'm here also to address the board as a parent with a child who attends Shadyside, as well as a neighbor who lives near the school expressing concerns for the proposed tower. Um, if neighboring counties have enacted policies that do not uh, permit cell towers on elementary sky sites, I <clears throat> just question why Anne Arundel County should be the first and why our sh kids should be the experiment. Um, while we may not agree on science, um, but in a litigious society, even a perceived risk of harm can cost counties a fortune in legal fees. Right now, in Ripon, California, parents are fighting the school district because two children there were diagnosed with some rare forms of cancer that they claim occurred because of long-term exposure to a cell tower placed at their school. And as Mike mentioned, the International Association of Firefighters has adopted an official position opposing the use of cell, cell towers on fire stations until they say a study is conducted and proven that that such sites are not hazardous to the health of their members. So, you know, why should we put our kids at this risk? And transparency, it's also an issue. Um, <clears throat> Milestone Communications, which is the company that wants to construct the tower, uh, mailed information to people less than 300 feet from the site. Um, we've been made aware through our research or through our dealings with our neighbors that this didn't reach the majority of parents and residents who live nearby and attend the school. And for my research, this is their business plan. They file the application in the summer when most people are gone and make sure that they don't give that information to everyone. Um, so just this evening, when our grassroots efforts is reaching a bit of traction, they informed us that the, or they are postponing the community meeting that was set for July 19th to August 9th. And that's just less than two days for us to um, inform residents that this has changed. And they only let that be known to one parent. And so I just implore you to consider our concerns. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Madam? Um, am I on? You're on. Okay, I'm on. Okay. Good evening. My name is Diane Kuby, and I live on Washington Avenue in Shady Side. Thanks for coming out. Thank you for having us. Um, as a mother and as a grandmother, <clears throat> I'm opposed to this, but also because of my background. I was actually a representative for the United States on a congressional delegation that went over to ascertain the health concerns from the Chernobyl accident. So I have a background in that as well. and back everything that these people were saying. But I'm here for another reason. I'm here because of property values. Nationwide, statistically, when these towers go up in anyone's neighborhood, there is a 2 to 20% drop in property values. So for the money that the school board is taking in as profit, OK, and I think it's not really a very good deal that they negotiated, to be honest with you. 
but for the monies that they'll be receiving, property values going down are going to deplete tax revenue. So it may not be a win-win situation, and it may actually hurt the county and our properties as well if this happens, as well as the pocket of Anne Arundel County for their tax base. <coughs> so thank you, and I really hope that you take this under consideration. Okay. Thank you for coming out, Mr. folks. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Peruca. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before you, before you, you leave, uh, Mr. Shea, or perhaps anybody else on the panel, I'm a little con uh, interested. It seems interesting to me that we're – obviously, uh, it's hard to argue that you want to protect children, but if these things are dangerous, aren't they dangerous for everybody? You mentioned some kind of uh, – you made some kind of statement that we, that, that we know that – that these things are more dangerous for children, but how, how do we know that? Is, is there some body of evidence that you can not recite right now, but point us to? Um, okay, thanks. Yes, I mean, there are lots of studies where they do MRIs and observe the brain of, in the bodies of children versus adults, and they can see that the that the radiation actually penetrates deeper because the skulls are thinner, the mass is less, the distance to travel through up from one side to the other is less. All the standards for testing are done on adult-sized um, skulls and, and people and body mass. And the standards that haven't changed since 1996, you can imagine what how much things have changed since 1996, um, as far as like the power of has the, our has devices. Has the radiation changed? Or? A lot, yeah. I mean, phones, different frequencies, different powers, better better batteries. Um, things have changed a lot. Not to get down into the weeds, but you know, when 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 the, the BG&E was putting smart meters in everybody's mm -hmm. homes, there was a lot of people who were standing up and saying. And, and complaining and asking questions about uh, about the the danger of mm -hmm. the smart meters and the radiation, et cetera, et cetera, yes. et cetera. Yes. And that was uh, that did not get very much uh, right. uh, play. Is uh, is this like that, or is it? It's, what? it's similar, and the difference is the smart meter is like having a cell phone on the side of your house that calls the company once a day. So it's. So it's not on all the time, like a cell tower, which is just, imagine like a spotlight blanketing the area. Right. Yeah, 24-7. Um, right. well, so a smart meter is very different than what we're talking about. Okay, but that, that, just for the record, that is what you just said is contra from what I have understood that, that they're, they're only one call one, once a day. That's, oh, it can be a there lot. It can be a lot that, more, that's true. There are many people that argue that it's much they can more say than it, that. But. And you know what, the way that system works, it's a network, so my home may call once a day, but there, it's it's a local network. So each meter is calling a close by meter, and right. then there might be one that's re reporting everything back to the to the electric company. So it, it would be busy all day. So you could have one on your house yeah. that's busy all day. Yeah. I I appreciate it. I think I think th there's there's a lot to learn here mm -hmm. to to make these decisions. Yeah. If I could just add. Michael, can I address the two things that you mentioned also? Um, yeah, one I don't want to get too, we, we got to keep going. Uh, yeah, exactly. Go 30 seconds. Politically, it's different because I've done a lot of community organizing. And when you talk to uh, somebody in the community, they are concerned. So I think it politically, it has juice. The other thing is these young children are in that school seven hours a day, and the energy is radiated constantly from that antenna. That's different than the appliance checking in. In other words, the radiation is constant right. from the antenna. Right. Thank you. Thank All you right. very much. Mr. Thomas Mr. Yes, Chair, I am. Thank Mr. you. Chair, Mr. Walker. Uh, you said your last name was QB. Is that? Yes. Could you spell it for me? Yes. It's not spelled the way it's pronounced. It's okay. spelled K U B as in boy, E as in Edward. Thank you. All right. Can I just say? Uh, we're we're finished. Do you want to go with that, no, Mr. This Walker? had somebody else to say. I think this okay. gentleman testify here. Yeah, it's. it's we have another person here. Okay. Sir, you want to go ahead and uh, put your two minutes on the record, please? Name and address. Uh, name's Larry Earl. John Earl is my son. Thanks for coming out, sir. You're welcome. 115 Smith Avenue here in Annapolis. Just a personal note to kind of think, put things in perspective. John has a sister 
44 years old who is living with us. My wife and I are basically caregivers. Jessica's had two uh, brain surgeries at Hopkins. Glioblastoma is the same one that Senator Kennedy had. 2017, where we are right now, can't definitively say that her cancer is a result of RF frequency. Two to four years from now, we're going to know it. I mean, we're that close to it. The decision to put up a cell tower this year or next year could be an easy one for you to make, but you may regret doing it three years from now. Just throw that out for perspective. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, folks, for coming out. Thank you. I'm taking no one else wants to come down and speak on this, so we're going to move forward. Okay, is any item any council member would like to place on the agenda? Of course, I'm always going to take a shot at this one because I like hearing myself talk a little bit. Um, we're moving forward with the fountains on Marley Creek and Furnace Creek, and I have had people make calls to me wanting to know about how to get the fountains out on their different districts. And if you folks want information on that, just call the office and I'll help you get situated with your fountains. And of course, as much as I'd like to come take care of your waterway, it's, it's a full-time job just taking care of Marley Creek and Furnace Creek. So you're gonna, it's going to require some participation on your part. All right, with that being said, uh, let's Mr. see. The, Mr. Trumbauer? Is this still items not appearing? Should I do my open meetings designation thing? No, but we have oh. other things before them. Understood. Is oh, very good. Thank you. Yep. Never mind me. Yep. Come on now. Don't be, don't be stepping go. on the chairman's uh, feet already. All right. Uh, the administration is going to be uh, withdrawing uh, Bill 6317. And I'm going to make the following announcement. I'd like to announce for the record that in accordance with the state's Open Meeting Act, Councilman Trumbauer, to my right, and Legislative Council, Amy Tate to my left, have volunteered to be the Council's designee to obtain and obtain training on the Open Meeting Act. All right, with that being said, may I have a motion that the partial readings of any bill, resolutions, or minutes constitute, constitutes the reading of a whole. So moved, Mr. Second. And I already got that. Madam Secretary, please read the minutes of July 3rd, 2017. The meeting was called to order by Chairman John Grasso at 7 p.m. and opened with the invocation given by Mr. Prusky, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of July so 3rd? So moved, Mr. Second. Chair. All right, all opposed? Motion carries. Minutes of July 3rd, 2017 meeting stands approved. Okay. Madam Secretary, please read a title of bills to be introduced this evening. Bill number 6717, an ordinance concerning zoning and construction and property maintenance code supplement, construction code administrative provisions, agritourism, permits, agricultural buildings. Bill number 6817, an ordinance concerning finance, taxation, and budget, admissions, and amusement tax, agritourism. Bill number 6917, an ordinance concerning personnel, position and control in the classified service and exempt service. Bill number 7017, an ordinance concerning Snug Harbor Waterways Improvement District, approval of loan and assignment agreement. Bill number 7117, an ordinance concerning capital budget, Venice Beach Shore Erosion Control District, new capital project and appropriation. Bill number 7217, an ordinance concerning Cedarhurst on the Bay, Special Community, Be community Benefit Dif District, approval of loan and assignment agreement. Bill number 7317, an ordinance concerning Cedarhurst on the Bay, Shore Erosion Control District, approval of loan and assignment agreement. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Madam Secretary, please read a title of resolutions to be introduced this evening. Resolution number 3217, resolution confirming the appointments of members of the classified service to serve on the Pension Oversight Commission for Anne Arundel County. Resolution number 3317, resolution appointing a member to the Anne Arundel County Public Guardianship Review Board. Resolution number 3417, resolution approving submission of names for the Property Tax Assessment Appeal Board. All right, thank you. We have a motion to suspend the rules to hear and vote on resolution number 3217, 3317, and 3417, and bill number 6017 out of order. So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. And I got a second. Madam Secretary, please call roll. Mr. Prusky. Aye. Mr. Peruka. Aye. Mr. Trumbauer. Aye. Mr. Walker. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Fink. Aye. 
Mr. Grasso. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. The motion to suspend the rules to hear and vote on resolution numbers 3217, 3317, and 3417, and bill number 6017 is passed. Madam Secretary, please read title resolution number 3217. Resolution number 3217, resolution confirming the appointments of members of the classified service to serve on the Pension Oversight Commission for Anne Arundel County. Thank you. Okay, I, I'm taking it that you're Ms. Kaylee uh, Schultz? I am, yes. Uh, how would I guess that one? Go ahead, Ms. Schultz, you're <laughs> on. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> Mr. Walker. We're, this, since this is her first time being down in front of us, I just wanted to say welcome. Thank and, you. Um, and we won't ask you any tough questions tonight. Oh. And, he, and, he, and, he, and usually he's the, he's the stumper, too. So he's <laughs> taking it easy we'll on you we'll tonight. We'll give you a pass this first night. Thank you so much. Um, resolution 3217 offers three elected employee representatives to the Pension Oversight Commission. Robert Stoll, Michael Shear, and Bill DeHoff. Mr. Stoll is a wastewater technician and handles operations at the Patuxent Wastewater Facilities. Mr. Shear is a police officer, and Mr. DeHoff is a, the chief of telecommunication services for Anne Arundel County. You should have the resumes in front of you. Okay, thank you very much. Any uh, questions for the council? Seeing none. Okay, uh, we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the public hearing on 3217 if anybody wants to chime in. Seeing no movement in the crowd, we're gonna close the public hearing on 3217. Madam Secretary, uh, please read the title of resolution number 3217. Resolution number 3217. Resolution confirming the appointments of members of the classified service to serve on the Pension Oversight Commission for Anne Arundel County. All right, that. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on resolution number 3217. Mr. Perusky. Aye. Mr. Peruka. Aye. Mr. Trumbauer. Aye. Mr. Walker. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Fink. Aye. Mr. Grasso. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Resolution number 3217 is adopted. Thank you very much. Madam Secretary, please read the title of resolution number 3317. Resolution number 3317. Resolution appointing a member to the Anne Arundel County Public Guardianship Review Board. All right. And Ms. Schultz, you're on again. Thank you. Resolution 3317 appoints Kimberly Avalese, who is a lawyer, to the Adult Guardianship Review Board. You should have her resume in front of you. Okay. Any questions for the council? Seeing none, hearing none. We're going to open up the public hearing on 3317 if anybody wants to chime in. Seeing no movement in the crowd, we're going to close the public hearing on 3317. Madam Secretary, please write, read the title of resolution number 3317. Resolution number 3317, resolution appointing a member to the Anne Arundel County Public Guardianship Review Board. Thank you. Okay, any discussion? Seeing a move from the council, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on resolution number 3317. Mr. Prusky. Aye. Mr. Peruka. Aye. Mr. Trumbauer. Aye. Mr. Walker. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Fink. Aye. Mr. Grasso. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Resolution number 3317 is adopted. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Madam Secretary, please read the title of resolution number 3417. Resolution number 3417, resolution approving submission of names for the Property Tax Assessment Appeal Board. All right. Ms. Schultz. Thank you. Resolution 3417 offers three qualified applicants to the governor for one regular and one alternate member to the Property Tax Assessment Appeal Board. As you may recall, we are required to submit three names to the governor for each position, and he will make the final decision. The nominees for the regular member are Owen McDonald Taylor Esquire, Maria Luna Baker, and Carol Geller Shores. The nominees for the alternate position are Jan Holland, Raman Frederick, and Dick Ladd. You should have the resumes in front of you. I like that name, Dick Ladd. Very detail-oriented individual. <laughs> Very much so. Okay, with that being said, uh, any questions from the council? Seeing none. We're going to open up the public hearing on 3417. If anybody wants to chime in, seeing no movement in the crowd, we're going to close the public hearing on 3417. Uh, Madam Secretary, please read the title of resolution number 3417. Resolution number 3417, resolution approving submission of names for the Property Tax Assessment Appeal Board. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll in resolution number 3417. Mr. Prusky. Aye. Mr. Peruka. Aye. Mr. Trumbauer. Aye. Mr. Walker. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Fink. Aye. Mr. Grasso. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, mm -hmm. none in the negative. Resolution number 3417 is adopted. Okay. Madam Secretary, please read the title of bill number 6017 as amended. 
Bill number 60, 6017 is amended, an ordinance concerning the issuance, sale, and delivery of Anne Arundel County, Maryland general obligation bonds and bond anticipation notes. All right. Mr. Hammond, you're on. Always good to see you. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing I'm doing well, Mr. Uh, Chairman and members of the council. Thanks for asking. And that being said, uh, we want to talk about the uh, annual uh, bond ordinance. Uh, we uh, had uh, this before you at the previous meeting. There was an amendment to conform it to, to the approved budget. And uh, we have the representatives from the Office of Finance, uh, the county controller, Ms. McQuaid, and the deputy controller, uh, Lorraine. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, Bill Henn, our, our counsel, and of course, uh, Lori Blair um, from our Office of Law. So I'll turn it over to uh, Ms. McQuaid if she has anything to add to what you've already heard. Lori and Tony, I'm, I'm, I have these senior <laughs> moments. Yeah. Um, Bill 6017 is our annual bond ordinance concerning the issuance, sale, and delivery of the county's general obligation bonds and our bond anticipation notes. This ordinance, ordinance is in compliance with our legal indebtedness limitation of the county and provides for funding um, essential cash flow needs of bonds finance projects. Um, the bonds are not to exceed $400 million and bonds not to exceed a billion $84 million. And uh, the ordinance finances the county's fiscal 18 county council approved capital budget. Okay, very good. All right, any questions on the council? Okay, seeing none. We're going to open the public hearing up on 6017 as to how we're going to spend your money. So if you want to come down and yell or say thank you, you're welcome to do so. And seeing the movement in the crowd, we're going to close the public hearing. Oh, Ms. Johnson. Come on down, Ms. Johnson. It's always good to see you. You can sit. You can stay. I'm fine. This is short. Julie Johnson, P.O. Box 6634, Annapolis, Maryland. You know, these things just really distress me. There's nothing I can do about it. You know, it basically, mm -hmm. it's a done deal. But, you know, when you look at the tax burden that we're going to be facing as the interest rates go up, um, as the the baby boomers retire 10,000 per day, uh, the burden on you know, public resources you know is just overwhelming. And again, you know, if you listen to C-SPAN, you hear people calling in, and there there are a lot of people who are really desperate all across the country because they're struggling to make ends meet. People who have always worked, people who have always been confident. I'm well educated. I'm hard working. I have a terrific resume. I know I can get a job. Suddenly feel I don't know if I will be able to find a job. Um, I don't know if I will be able to obtain financing to start a new business that I'm capable of running. Um, there is just so much anxiety. And you know, the, the other thing is that a large part of this county and state, you know, a large source of the funding is from the federal employees. And I know that you all know that there is little money already in the kitty to pay for those retirements. They're counting on getting some pretty hefty pensions. Where's the money going to come from? We call them unfunded mandates. And there's talk that this is $80 trillion. Other people are saying these other unfunded <clears throat> mandates are $120 trillion. You know, there's a matter of fiscal responsibility, and you just don't keep borrowing in anticipation that someone's going to sprinkle fairy dust all over everything and solve all the problems. So I hope that you will restrain yourself, talk to staff members to minimize their expenditures, and really try to preserve the, you know, the future of all of our citizens, from the newborn who is owes $60,000, the newborn owes $60,000 as his part of the national debt. There you go. You and I do too. Well, I can tell you just short and sweet, the council doesn't have any cars anymore. We don't have food back there anymore. So the council has leaned itself out to virtually nothing. Somebody's got to bring the donuts in if we want donuts. So just to let you know we're doing our part. With that being said, uh, anybody else want to speak on Bill 6017? 
Seeing no movement in the crowd, the hearing on Bill 6017 as amended is now closed. Madam Secretary, please read the title of Bill number 6017 as amended. Bill number 6017 is amended, an ordinance concerning the issuance, sale, and delivery of Anne Arundel County, Maryland general obligation bonds and bond anticipation notes. Any discussion from my colleagues? Seeing no movement in the crowd. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on Bill number 6017 as amended. Mr. Peruski. Aye. Mr. Peruka. Aye. Mr. Trumbauer. Aye. Mr. Walker. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Fink. Aye. Mr. Grasso. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Bill number 6017, as amended, is passed. Thank you once again. Madam Secretary, please read the title of Bill number 3417, as amended. Bill number 3417, <clears throat> as amended, an ordinance concerning licenses, towing companies, police initiated tows. This ought to bring a storm of controversy. <clears throat> Look at Chief. Yeah. Yeah, Chief. John, you guys right. What's the matter? You don't want to join us, or we don't have another seat for you back there? I'm actually fine, Mr. Grasso. Because <laughs> we got one right here. I told Chief you did a great job last time, so you're welcome to have that seat right there. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, with that being said, administration, we always like to have somebody have our back. I got it. And he's the perfect somebody, man for it. I can tell you that. that. Right. He's, got, uh, he's Mr. good. Chair, Mr. Chair, members of the council, uh, you've seen this bill, uh, I think, on three or four occasions. Uh, you've had a number of amendments. Uh, Mr. Hartzell is here to uh, uh, address uh, uh, additional comments that uh, may be needed to be made tonight. And obviously, we're here to answer questions. We've got representatives from the police department, the Office of Law, and inspections and permits. Okay. Anybody in the council want to say anything? Mr. Walker? Okay. Well, just for you folks, just to entertain you a little bit, I'm going to tell you what basically happened here, okay? Um, this piece of legis legislation started from yours truly, and it made a way to Mr. Walker and then the majority of the council. And pretty much what it was, it got into situations dealing with the police department and telling people, whether it be um, fair treatment or unfair treatment, however you look at things, the um, council earlier felt that it would just be prudent that any business dealings with the towing people, if there was anything at the police department wanted to change in regulations to the police, police department or inspection permits, that it would be prudent to be brought before the county council. So that this way we believe in transparency. So if anything that wanted to be changed, you know, if the police had a problem with something, they say, hey, we're going to do this. And the towing people would have their opportunity to come up and say, this is a great idea or it's a bad idea. But the key word behind this whole thing was transparency. And initially, and so that's how 60, um, or excuse me, uh, 3417 happened. Um, shortly after that point, uh, it, it got to be, a, um, we wanted to take the manual that was in the police towing program and put that in the code, but it didn't actually, a whole manual didn't go in. There was pieces in the manual that we felt were important. And we started implementing more and more into the manual and the code so that um, as time went on, if anything had to be addressed by the police department, inspections, permits, or towing, again, they would have to come before the county council to do that. Councilman Smith, last meeting, introduced probably 10 plus amendments uh, that was directly out of the manual and looked at the department and said, this is out of your manual, you're okay with that. That was the last point that we had at the last meeting. Now, there's been some changing developments. I'm not sure how things are going to work out, but I, uh, I hold my ground to believe that I believe in transparency, and I just think that this isn't an issue enough with the towing people that I really believe that the police department inspections permits and the, and the um, towing people need to come before us on anything that they want to change. I've been accused of turning Anne Arundel County from a charter government into a commission government. And I guess if you want to call it that, well, so be it. But again, I think transparency is a very important thing. With that being said, that's my opening dialogue. Mr. Mr. Smith? I think it's only fair for me to say something, because uh, I know Mr. Trumbauer looked, <laughs> looked over there. 
so the last couple of weeks, I've sort of been uh, working uh, with the administration and with, with the tours, <laughs> made some comments in the past as well. Uh, and uh, so wh where I stand on this issue is I've always tried to find a middle ground, a middle road on where we stand on this issue. I think it's important that we, uh, as, as, a, as, as a council, uh, because we work as a body, uh, when it comes to this, Mr. Uh, Grass was right. There were some current concerns about uh, the towing industry uh, and the tours specifically uh, that are very valid. They have valid concerns on this process with how auto return is being implemented, uh, how some of the procedures that have been pushed out uh, due to changes in the staffing at the police department uh, that have been imposed on the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the tours themselves uh, and have very valid, very valid concerns. The police, on the other hand, also has uh, valid concerns on their ability to be able to leverage uh, time-sensitive issues when it comes to being able to modify or, or, or making some meaningful, I guess, uh, uh, changes uh, that will allow them to still execute their jobs. And so in my mind, I think there's a balance that you strike between allowing the police to have some authority to be able to control the process that they're responsible for and our legislative ability to be able to, 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 to impede on something that we believe is, 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 is sort of out of bounds. Uh, that process will never go away. We're, as a legislative body, we're always going to be able to retain that, that ability and, uh, to, to do those things uh, going forward. Uh, uh, so over the last couple of weeks, I've met with the police chief and a number of other parties to try to figure out, well, what is the best way forward to be able to implement uh, this process? And so my vote is based on that, uh, uh, putting a little faith and trust in the uh, administration as well as Mr. Hartzell and the police uh, chief uh, to be able to come up with some fair process uh, that we believe the towing industry is going to uh, benefit from and not literally just sort of uh, hand them something that, is, that, is, that doesn't in include their participation. That's where I'm coming from, at least trying to meet in the middle of the road. Uh, and it is my goal uh, that if that does not happen, that this hammer that we have can, can, can still be dropped. And so my vote is based on simply trying to meet in the middle of the road so that both parties benefit from, from uh, the outcome of this process. And that's where I stand uh, today. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Prusky. Um Chief, uh, first of all, you look great tonight. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Very chiefy. I, I, I think I need to buy bigger clothes. <laughs> I, I wanted to follow up on one thing, and, and I think it's important as a matter of the public record and the discussion we've had through all this. What has changed based upon the discussions that have occurred between the towers and the police department in terms of conversations, um, you know, where we've gone, you, you've certainly heard the concerns from the council, you know, implementing of things. I just want to be clear, you know, the message for the public, for them, and for everyone sitting here about what before and after. I think that's a great point, sir. So I, as recently as about an hour and a half ago, Councilman Smith and I had a conversation, and my word to him was that before the police department tries to take any further steps, that we're going to have however many meetings we need to have with the towers, with as many of you on the council as want to come to get to a shared ownership of the decision in the future. We think that auto return will bring some good things to the county. I think that as the discussion has evolved, I think some of your colleagues on the dais um, might have softened their position on auto return. But I do think that it's very important that the police are responsive to that part of our constituency uh, that do provide tow service for the police department. Um, I think we have to be reasonable and I think we need to have discussions about what we do moving forward and then come to like a shared <coughs> consensus, if that makes sense. Thank you. Did I answer your question okay? Yeah. So. Okay, I just want to throw something there, Chief, because I'm kind of getting a little cross message here. It sounds like that we're going to still perceive with auto return. Is that a yes or a no? So. My last comment, and, and I'll defer to the CAO, my last comment to Mr. Smith was, let's get some meetings together and talk about it. Okay. Because like we said, we've had two meetings already so far. One just had two towers show up. And because I said to the one towing company, you are going to contact the database or to make the calls to all the towers. Yes, I will. And I think he called someone in the police department. And I think somebody in the police department said it ought to come from the councilman's office, meaning yours truly. And so I said, well, wait a minute. They're already taking care of this. And so we sat there with just two people, auto return and a few police officers. Then the next meeting came along, and we made, I made it very clear that you're going to contact all these towing companies and ask them to have another meeting. And we met at the, um, uh, the, the, the police place across from the police station. Traffic safety. Traffic safety. And then this time we had four or five towers show up, 
out of probably 20 or 30 towers. And so I'm trying to understand is that, like Councilman Fink once said, John, just because you know, people don't show up doesn't mean they're for it or against it. And uh, it appeared to me that there's more people against it. And I mean, I can look right here and see that there's more than four people that are for it that are right there that are all against it. So the deal that I understood that we talked about, Councilman Smith, is that he was told that this auto return is not moving forward. That it, look, may I? Please do. Yeah, this is Mark Hartzell. Um, I'm going to digress for a second because this is um, this is uh, legislation and discussion of auto return has been ongoing for some time. Councilman Grasso, you've actually been involved in a number of the meetings, but where this precipitated from is the administration was beginning to pursue a, um, an agreement with, with auto return. It has signed, okay, an agreement with its intent to move forward with auto return. After that agreement was signed, I think that was signed back in, uh, forget, uh, December or, or January, February, some in that time frame. But since that time, um, at the request of yourself, at the request of Councilman Fink, we had gotten together with, uh, with uh, Auto Return as well as members of the towing community to talk about the concerns that uh, the towing community had relative to Auto Return. At that meeting, it was myself who said that we would not move forward with Auto Return until after the licensing period, which begins now in July and will go through September. Further to that discussion, okay, I had said as, as early as this evening to Councilman Smith that we will not, right now auto return is on the back burner until we can resolve the issues between the towers, okay, um, the police department, okay, and auto return. Jason Fetterman from our Office of Law has been engaged to work through that documentation and until such time and until we actually mitigate and resolve those issues, we will not move forward. That's exactly where we are with auto return right now. Mr. Chair. Okay. Mr. Walker. Mr. Hartzell, don't you think that it might have been a better approach to talk to the towers first? It sounds like we got the cart before the horse. We signed a contract, move forward with a, with a whole new system. I, I, I'm just asking the question. Let yeah. me finish my question, That's and then you can talk. Uh, we move forward with a whole new system, signed a contract, had no conversation with the folks that it was going to be impacting, and then came to them afterwards with a 22-page contract from the auto return company asking them to sign this in order to continue to participate in the program. I, it just seems to me that maybe it might have been a better idea to talk to them first since they were the ones who were going to be mostly impacted. And you well, can disagree. I just well, I, I do disagree. I mean, we have the right as administration, as everybody has indicated here over the last four months, that auto return is a tool to provide, um, for lack of a better phrase, uh, administration over their police towing program. Um, but as we got, with all due respect, as we got feedback from the towers, we said, okay, let's work those issues out, okay, before we move the program forward. My, pro my problem, and like I said, the more I've learned about auto return, it, you, you get more, more knowledge on things. The thing that it probably bothers me more than anything, and I, and I got to, people got to hear this, is that these contracts were basically told to the towers that if you don't sign these contracts, you're going to be pulled out of rotation. And all that everybody kept saying the whole time was is that this is not going to change anything. That's what the towers were being told. It's not going to change anything. And I'm trying to understand, well, why in the world are they signing a 22-page contract if it's not going to change anything? I had, a, I had a lot of gas with that. And then I had Jason over here from the Office of Law, okay, with a law degree, okay, that's telling me that it's okay to do what you're doing when I know the bill that this council passed by yours truly introduced 6016. It says no one can be pulled out of rotation in the police program, right, unless it's a threat to the safety of the people. And I just don't see signing a 22-page contract as a threat to the safety of the people. So it was that opening statement that really turned around and delayed the process. Otherwise, in my personal belief, we were going to move forward. So I'm going to give it to you this way, in my thought. If this bill was to fail tonight or pass tonight, and if it was to pass, okay, and you folks have already signed a contract with auto return, all right, you might be into the relicing part of the deal. But my bill the law still stays in the play that these people, if they are licensed in that program, you cannot deny them rotation unless they've done something wrong. 
So if they don't sign the contract with auto return, who's auto return going to operate with? You're only going to have four or five people that are going to sign the contract. So what happens to the other 26 companies? What are you going to do? And I'm not saying that you're going to move forward auto return, but I'm just saying in consideration, if you do do that, 6016 says you can't retaliate against these people because they won't sign a contract. 6016 merely says that if they don't sign the contract, there's, that, that we cannot eliminate them from the rotation. That's what it states. That's I'm, exactly right. So what if they don't sign the contract, what I happens? Fully understand that. Well, then, in fact, it says we can't eliminate them from the rotation. We don't. We are not forcing them, anybody, to sign the contract. We are not. Not this now, a, right? This is a police. Well, I, I don't know. We'll that see. is not, that is not, see, uh, Mr. Hartzell, that is not the message that was brought to me by these towing people, that they were told by the auto return that you don't do this. Is that. Now, this is wall water under the bridge, but all I'm trying to say, sir, is that I'm trying to bring light to how we got from this point to this point. And Councilman Smith seems to believe that this auto return thing is going to go away or it's going to be some kind of dialogue that he's going to be able to pull out of the hat to make everybody happy. God bless him if that's what happens. Okay, I'm just not so sure. That's my problem. No, and I appreciate it. But listen, but the, the, where we are today, okay, auto return aside, we have legislation that's in front of us today, okay, that takes the discretion away from the police department, okay? And we have to, and we'll introduce an amendment that puts it back in. But at the end of the day, this is a police towing program. So the legislation that's uh, put forth in front of the council today, it just doesn't currently work for us today. We have been at this with this legislation for, I believe it's been four months, through 20 amendments, okay? If the issue is about auto return, okay, let's deal with auto return. But clearly, the legislation that's before you guys today to vote on today, okay, certainly from our perspective, we do not, exp we would encourage you not to pass because it takes away the authority of the police department to oversee their police tow program. Okay, now with that being said, I respect the chief wholeheartedly, okay? And just like in any department head, there's the underlings that do things that cause problems, okay? And I think the chief has got great people underneath them, but really what we got here is there was a few people that broke the straw that broke the camel's back, and the, the auto return is really what's turned around and created this and pushed us over the edge, per se. It's not taking any away from the police. There are, there are interesting people in everybody. You know, the police, anywhere at that. But that's what pushed it over was the auto return. Okay, okay. but, but let, I want to be clear about what you just said. So are you, are you saying that these were police individuals that were the, that were the bad apples? Because at the no. end of the day, the, the, the whole legislation that's been before us today is under the false premise that we need to protect, okay, the towers from the police. No, and that's, quite that's frankly, not what I'm saying at well, all. Well, good. Okay, okay, because quite frankly, what we really need to do, okay, is protect the citizens of Anne Arundel County from a few bad towers. I agree. That's what we need to do. Now, what, here's what happens, Mr. Hartzell, and I'm sure you're aware of this. I don't know if you've ever been in government before and dealt with this stuff, but i got at least six years probably more experience in government than you probably do, and you probably got experience in something else that I don't have in. But one thing I've learned in government is there's a thing called bureaucrats. Okay, that have never owned or operated a successful business. And what they turn around and do is they implement things on people that do own a business and don't know what the ramifications is going to be by doing the things that they do. And, and one of the perfect examples, and, I, and it was just a pure mistake, you know, or I don't even call it a mistake. One person, I guess, was following the rules and not following the rules as tightly as they should. Another person wanted to follow the rules a little bit tighter. And one of the things that led into, and I keep bringing this up over and over again, is a $750 fee on people changing the numbers of the towing trucks. Okay? Now, I don't know, okay, that was probably a mistake. It wasn't a good call. Mm -hmm. But it's a difference, though, that when you have someone who's in business and, and does something like that, the first thing that comes to their mind is, okay, well, I got rules in a book over here. Maybe they would have turned around and went back to the upline and said, hey, man, I know the rule says this and all that, but do we really want to do this or maybe we should consider legislation? Okay, and that's what happens a lot of times, you know, that, that people are in government, not intentionally, but they've never owned or operated a business before, and it's easy to put the hammer down on somebody and not know what the ramification is going to be. And that doesn't make them a bad person. All I'm saying is that I just want people to be treated fairly because I'm all about making sure businesses survive in Anne Arundel County. And of course, there are bad towing people. We all know that. There's bad people everywhere, including the Baltimore Gas and Electric that I just dealt with today. There's nothing bad about her, but there's bad people that work there. 
It's the way the world works. I just want to make sure everybody's getting a fair shake. And I don't want somebody making a decision that's never owned and operated a business, telling people that their livelihood, what they're going to do, like changing numbers on a truck because it's the wrong size at 750 bucks. I just don't want to go down that road again. That's what I'm worried about. OK? All right, with that being said. Can we have the public hearing? Yeah, I'm, 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 listen, this is important. At least it is to me. Okay. With that being said, um, anybody else want to talk to the administration? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the uh, public hearing on 3417 if anybody wants to chime in. And if you need some seats up here, I'm sure the administration has got them warmed up for you at this point. You're welcome to come down. I do. And I'm looking for, um, it looks like Mr. Michael, is it, is it Tuber, is it? Tauber. Tauber. I'm sorry about that. A little hard on that B there. And Mr. Uh, Gary Thompson, and anybody else that wants to come down and chime in, grab a mic. You're going to do your name and address. You know the drill, two minutes, mm. and we'll take it from there. I'll just put the mic with you later. Go ahead, Mike. So uh, I guess we'll start from Mr. Talbert. Okay. Thanks this for coming on. out and visiting us tonight. Oh, thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Michael Talbert, uh, 833 White Avenue, Atlantic, Maryland. Uh, I've been in the towing business for uh, my whole life. Uh, our company's been doing it for over 50 years for the police department, and uh, I think we've done a pretty good job at it. Uh, this, uh, the police department saying that they have no powers to do anything. I mean, what you have right here, uh, it looks to me like if you're doing something wrong, they can come in and do something, take you to a hearing, and suspend you and get rid of you. I don't think any of that's ever been done, uh, but yet we want to write more rules and regulations. And again, what you said about the three inch uh, lettering, four inch lettering, whatever. A couple of years ago, out of nowhere, from 2002, we were able to charge $3 a mile for any car that went over five miles that was coming back to Millersville uh, Police Station or to one of the uh, police, any of the police stations, if they were out of town. Say in Towson, there was a, uh, a car that was involved in a crime in Anne Arundel County. We had to go pick it up. <clears throat> Two or three years ago, they said, we're unable to pay that $3 anymore. If you don't like it, don't do it. Same thing, every time. If you don't like it, don't sign up for the program. We're, this is something we had for 10 years and they just went and took it away. Uh, the thing on the boats about towing illegally, uh, you know, the uh, abandoned boats. At one time, we were getting paid to tow the boat in. We were also getting paid to take the boat to the landfill. The very first time I built them for two tows, uh, the uh, lieutenant called up and asked why, and I told him because it was in the rules and regulations, and he said, show me, so I had to go down and show him. A month later, we had new rules and regulations where we could only charge one time. The, the tow in, not the tow to the dump, or vice versa, whatever. So, again, we, we've been working hard for Anne Arundel County Police Department, and there's very few people that are going to tell you that they were ripped off by us. Now, if there's a couple bad towers out there, let's work at getting rid of them. But don't make a whole new set of rules and regulations up and go through a company in California trying to straighten this mess out because that's not going to help anything. You know, the, the dispatch system going to California is not going to help a thing. Uh, it's going to cost the towers money. It's going to cost the citizens more money because they're going to have to pay us more money to get their car out. So it, it's just a, to me, it's a bad deal. They have it in Baltimore County. I've talked to some of my uh, competitors in Baltimore County and uh, they said, uh, you know, the further up the ranks you go in the Baltimore County Police Department, the better auto return gets. But the guys on the street are like, man, we hate it. We wish it was back to the old way. We got things done faster and more efficiently than, and now, you know, we're just all screwed up. So that's about all I have on that. Thanks, sir. Appreciate you coming out. Uh, Mr. Thompson? Uh, Gary Thompson, 236 Westwood. Thanks for coming out, Mr. Thompson. Thank you. Um, the biggest problem I had was the, when the auto return, when they told us there was going to be a new bit dispatch system, we said fine. They came out, talked to us about it, and then they presented this contract. And if you've read the contract, it had things that they were going to, the auto return was going to be our disciplinary, they were going to control our records. It was just totally, I couldn't sign it. And that's where we started. We've never had a problem with the police. The police on, on the street are fantastic. Everything works fairly decently, but there's no way I could operate under that auto return contract. Okay. 
I know they've um, since then, not to below, uh, make things go on here, but they've made quite a, I don't know if you was at the meeting, I don't remember you being there, but they've made a whole lot of changes to that auto return, addressed a lot of the issues. I still don't know if you folks are okay with it, but I know Mr. Hartzell did make a comment. He said, well, we're going to work on this, and that was the first meeting. And they made a whole bunch of different changes, but, you know, it's, you have to look at it and see if it works for you or not. Never Sir, how are you doing this evening? Thanks for coming out. Doing fine, Chairman. Uh, Joe Tucker, uh, JT Restoration, Deal, Maryland. Um, I'm with, you know, with the guys here. None of us here are welcome all to return. They're just making you do more and more stuff, and they, it's just going to make it harder to do your job. Like you were saying, you, you have a small business out there. You can't put restrictions on small business and make them jump through hoops and make them <clears throat> you know, abide by certain rules when, you know, some of the rules just don't make sense. But when you hear that they've got a lot of people that that are on with auto return, I don't know anybody that's on with auto return that I've personally spoken to. And also, too, I haven't gotten one email yet about um, a meeting to meet with the police or anybody. So um, that's what I've got to say. And um, I hope that uh, auto return, you know, doesn't, okay. doesn't go through. Thanks. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Walker. Mr. Tucker, in the past when they've made changes to the, the police manual, have the police come to the towers or the tower association or someone and asked for input from any of the towers? I mean, it, I think everybody here has acknowledged, okay, we're, we haven't had problems with the county, but there could be towers that are, you know, problem issues or whatever in dealing with. Um, have they come and approached you all at all about changes and tried to consult? Not recently. No. Okay. no nobody well, has. The, the uh, policies have just changed in the book and no. Uh, and you get a new book. You, right. Thank you. you. Right. And also, if you got bad towers, discipline them. Get them off the list. It's pretty simple. Don't don't hold everybody accountable for bad towers. Right. That's just like any any like I said. There's bad people in Baltimore Gas and Electric too. Right. Exactly. Just what I was saying. Perfect. Madam, you want to say something? Yes, I do. Thanks. Hi, um, I'm Caitlin Tauber. I'm here with Tauber's Towing. Thanks for coming out. Thank you for having me. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, this isn't the towing industry trying to make, you know, our own regulations, as I know, um, like the shoe administration and the police department believe. This is the towing industry speaking up and voicing our opinion that how uh, p the police department has been implementing regulations recently isn't really fair and isn't really efficient to the tow industries. Um, you know, I was at a meeting regarding auto return when this all first started and was basically told, this is what we're doing, and if you don't like it, then you don't have to tow with us. They didn't really, you know, care much about our input, input at that time. Um, I know, like you said, now uh, they are seeking some more input, but that's just not how that all started. And just recently, um, they haven't seeking any of our input for anything. Um, and I know they're saying it's a consumer protection issue. But my stance is, if we're trying to best protect the consumer, then I feel that all parties should have their input so that you have a better understanding of you know, the towing industry, you know, what we can do and what we need and what the police department needs in order to best do their job to best protect the consumer. Um, you know, I know we all want the towers out there to be safe. We all want the police department to be safe. And we want the citizens of Anne Arundel County and the roads to all be safe. Um, this is just us, the towing industry, trying to come forward and work with the police department so that everybody can have their input so that we can you know, best serve the community. And so everybody's safe and everything is fair. Um, so I think if we can come forward to the county council and discuss everything and have a mediation that would, you know, better help everybody involved. So I think this bill should be passed. Yep. Thanks. And I couldn't agree with you more because some of my colleagues have said to me, this is kind of like the tail wagging the dog, you know, the telling people wanting this. In, in my experience in business, your biggest resource is your people. Okay, because they turn around and they come up with ideas that you would never think of. And I and like I said, it's a shame that you'd have to get a response like um, well, this is the way it is, and if you don't like it, tough. Because that's not something I would expect anybody to hear. Our resources, our people, and their input. Sir, you want to say something? Yes. My name's uh, Mark Bowen. Thanks for coming out, Mr. Bowen. Yes, sir. Uh, well, we've gone from putting regulations into the county code to auto return. I don't know why auto return's brought up in this, but where did auto return come from? This is where it came from. 
The county put out a bid for a third party to take over the radio room. When they put out that bid in June, the people that take care of us, that license us and suspend us, is inspection and permits. Inspection and permits was never told that this was going on. So now you get auto return the winning bidder. But auto return wasn't a winning bidder. Auto return didn't win the bid. But the county took the winning bidder, who was at $19 for the citizen to pay instead of 24, had a better track record, and told them that they weren't qualified. So they went down the road. So now you turn around and say, well, where did auto return work last? They worked in Pennsylvania. On the bid sheet, it specifically said in the past five years, if you weren't an excellent plus, we didn't want you. In a year and a half prior to the bid coming out, the state of Pennsylvania state legislation put auto return out of every county they were in in Pennsylvania. And you got copies of the newspapers because we sent them out showing you, said backdoor tactics, poor dispatching system, and failed to deliver. They're at one other place on the East Coast, Baltimore County. They went in 09, they got a 10 year lease. Whether they'll stay longer in that or not is debatable. My time's up because I could tell you one other fact if you would give me a little extra time. Yeah, beep, Jeff's yeah, good. Here's the other fact. When they came to the tellers with this, and they did, they gave us a letter in April, say you're out in May if you don't do it. They also gave us a letter signed by the police chief. I looked at the letter, and the auto return guy was sitting in my office. I got the letter the day before. I said, well, you know, I heard a lot of stories about auto return, but this don't look so bad. I said, here's the chief sent this letter. He said, well, let me look at it. I handed it to him. The guy said, what did he send his letter to you for? We ain't doing this. Hmm. Who in the world told him to send that letter? I said, I don't know who told him. He signed it. He said, no, we ain't doing this. This ain't going to happen. And this is what he sat there and told my secretary. This is what you'll do. And the public needs to know this. When we tell a car in, as we go through all the stuff they want you to do, when we get back to our storage lot, we got to immediately go to a computer and send Say your daughter's on her way to high school, has a minor accident, the police tow the car in. We get the car, we get back to our lot, we have a time limit. We gotta go on a computer and send your daughter's name, address, phone number, driving record, and any other information on that tow ticket to a computer database in Las Vegas or California. Now, she's not the owner of the car. If the driver ain't the owner of the car, we got to take the driver's information and send that to him. Now, my secretary said she didn't feel comfortable taking personal information and sending it to a database in Las Vegas or California. No other place. That's where this goes. Okay. Now, in the contract we got, and I'm not a lawyer, and, but I had Good, a lawyer read another mine, second, sir. Good. and when we read it, there was no place in that contract that said this information can't be telemarketed. Hmm. And even if it wasn't telemarketed, the government said last year that more tax returns went to people that didn't get them from people hacking computers. Now you got your personal information in Las Vegas or, or in California. Okay. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. You made your point. You made your point. Very good. Okay, um, anybody else want to speak on this? Did I get everybody? Okay, we're going to close the public hearing on 3417. Madam Secretary, please read the title of 3417 as amended. Bill number 3417 is amended in ordinance concerning licenses, towing companies, police initiated tows. All right, any discussion on the council? Seeing no movement. Okay, we do have an amendment. Uh, Madam Secretary, you want to please read Amendment 21. Amendment 21. This amendment allows the department to create rules, regulations, forms, and procedures to administer the licensed towing company program. Motion to adopt. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Administration, want to come down?
Administration. Councilman, thanks. Uh, basically, what we're proposing is the uh, uh, for Amendment 21 is that it 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 puts back in the language that has been taken out um, in order to give the police department um, back the discretion to operate the towing program. Mr. Chair. Mr. Trombauer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you for coming down, Mr. Hartzell. We don't get to see you very often. Um, thank you. So obviously, th this is this is the last date um, that we can vote on the bill. So if we amend it, th the bill essentially dies. Um, I'm okay with that, frankly. Um, but what I'm more interested in, let's presume for a second that either this amendment passes or the council votes the bill down. Can you clarify what happens next for me? Because I've, I've heard some discussion between Mr. Smith and you and Mr. Grasso and you, but I'm, I'm a little bit confused. I heard a lot of concern from the previous panel about the contract. I think I heard you said, we're not going to enter the contract until we have more meetings, until we get some sort of consensus. But I just want to give you a last chance to s clarify that for myself and the rest of the council. What happens next? Yeah, uh, Councilman Trumbauer. The what will happen next? The, 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 we 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 just I just stood in the back and I actually actually timed it. it was interesting. We just spent 12 minutes talking about auto return. The legislation that's before you has really nothing to do with auto return. However, um, if the if the um, legislation gets voted down, okay, um, what we're going to do is as I indicated earlier that we are going to work to uh, remove all the impediments between auto return, uh, the towers, police department, and so forth, so we can have an effective program going forward. And that won't happen until uh, we are, we're able to have uh, subsequent meetings so we can get everybody together to do that. So that's what's going to happen. And before, um, before any legitimate next steps, um, would there be some sort of notification to the council, or I, I think I heard you said you, you'd invite members of the council to participate in those meetings? The members of the council have participated in the past, so they're always welcome. So okay. I'm happy to do that. Okay. I mean, it just clearly there's some concern from the legislative branch about the situation. If this bill is defeated, um, you know, w w nothing legislatively would happen, but I guess people could bring a new bill forward or something. Um, that seems to be where the lay of the land is is now. So thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a dollar amount on this real quick. And uh, uh, Joanne, j just from your recollection, how much does it cost to advertise a bill like something like this? What do you best guess? It depends on so many factors, but probably give me an average for this one. For this one bill, mm -hmm. um, probably. Three hundred dollars. Okay, and well, every time an amendment time. goes in, one time, yeah. Every yeah, time an amendment goes in, you have to re-advertise it again. Correct, and that would probably be that's only one, so probably about a hundred, hundred and fifty. One hundred fifty per amendment. No, per per time, I have to advertise it after it's amended, and I'm wildly guesstimating right now. Okay, well, I'm just I'm just trying to look at the dollar amount because I'm looking at wasted taxpayer money because somehow I got a feeling, even though my colleague to the left is uh, very optimistic. I think this is just a waste of taxpayer money, not making sure this bill goes through. But I hate to be the one to say I told you so. So um, with that wouldn't, being said. It wouldn't um, be the first time, Mr. Chair. Yeah, it won't. It won't be. OK, with just, that being just, said. Mr. Chairman, just for the record, if this amendment passes, if this amendment passes, there's no advertising fee associated with it because the bill does. This time, yes. Right. That's correct. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's like Mr. Walker said, we spent a lot of time an effort trying to make this bill right. And uh, it's just a shame that if this thing goes down the tube, the taxpayers spent money for something that goes down the tube, and my personal belief, maybe come back to revisit again because things didn't get done the way they said they were going to get done. I'm just hoping I'm wrong about this. This is one time I'd want to be wrong. Okay, with that being said, um, I think uh, we wanted to open, let's see, we had, um, we needed to open up the, we have the amendment, all right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna call the roll on Amendment 21, Madam Secretary. Mr. Pruski. No. Mr. Pruka. Aye. Mr. Trumbauer. No. Mr. Walker. No. Mr. Smith. No. Mr. Fink. Aye. Mr. Grasso. No. Two in the affirmative, five in the negative. Amendment number 21 is defeated. Okay. 
All right. Being the amendment failed, so what we're going to do now is say, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on Bill 3417 as amended. Mr. Prusky. No. Mr. Pruka. No. Mr. Trombauer. No. Mr. Walker. Aye. Mr. Smith. No. Mr. Fink. No. Mr. Grasso. Aye. Two in the affirmative, five in the negative. Bill number 3417 as amended is defeated. Okay. Madam Secretary, please read the title of Bill number 5917 as amended. Bill number 5917 is amended, an ordinance concerning public safety, animal control, dangerous and vicious animals, Lilo's Law. All right. And we got a whole bunch of sponsors on there. Um, I don't see my name, but I'm adding my name on there if it wasn't. Okay. All right, known as the dog bill. Administration? Yeah, this is uh, really known as uh, Lilo's bill, uh, but this deals as... Uh, Lilo, Mr. Lilo. Lilo. Thanks. Chum chum. This deals with the issue of uh, dangerous and vicious animals. This was before you at the last meeting. There was an amendment to uh, deal with the issue of potentially dan dangerous animals, which was uh, uh, re re reintroduced into the bill. Uh, we have uh, Major Simpson and from the police department with Robin Catlett from Animal Control and Greg Swain from the Office of Law to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Anybody question from the council? Seeing no movement. We're going to open the public hearing on 5917. If anybody wants to chime in, please feel free to come down. Put your two minutes on the record, name and address. Okay. Seeing no movement, we're going to close the public hearing on 15. Oh, Ms. Johnson. Johnson. Ms. Johnson's coming down. Oh, Ms. Johnson. Nice to see you again, Ms. Johnson. Mr. Grasso, member. Oh. Uh, Julie Johnson, P.O. Box 6634, uh, Annapolis, Maryland. In general, I support the bill. But uh, over my lifetime, I've had a collection of pets, including you know, uh, a caiman that grew from about 18 inches to 24 inches. A caiman's a little, it's not really a rock, uh, crocodile or alligator, but it's sort of in that general family. And I used to have boa constrictors and things like that. And over the course of you know, my lifetime, I've done a couple of stupid things, and I managed to get bitten by these critters, and they, they were right, I was wrong. Like I stuck my hand in the wrong time in the wrong place um, and startled them or frightened them. <coughs> my concern about, and they drew blood. Uh, not very much, but they drew blood. And um, because the aquatic animal uh, as a meat eater, I was concerned about potential infections, so I wanted to be treated to make sure, you know, basically, um, you know, either antibiotics or tetanus shot or, or combination. I was concerned about whether the ramification or complications from this bill would require um, whoever treated me to uh, order that, you know, my little caiman would be, would be um, euthanized. Uh, or one of my boa constrictors. Um, so I don't know, I, I'm sure that's not, well, I don't know if that's the intent. Um, but at any rate, I wanted to raise that question, at, you know, but again, fundamentally, I certainly support the main thrust of the bill. I just didn't know if that question had been raised or addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Anybody else want to chime in? Seeing no movement in the crowd, we're going to close the public hearing on 5917. Madam Secretary, please read the title of Bill Number 5917 as amended. Bill Number 5917 is amended, an ordinance concerning public safety, animal control, dangerous and vicious animals, Lilo's Law. Any discussion in the council? Seeing no movement. Madam Secretary, please call the roll on Bill Number 5917 as amended. Mr. Prusky. Aye. Mr. Peruka. Aye. Mr. Trumbauer. Aye. Mr. Walker. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Fink? Aye. Mr. Grasso? Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Bill number 5917, as amended, is passed. All righty. Madam Secretary, please read the title of 6117 as amended. Bill number 6117 is amended, an ordinance concerning personnel positions in the classified service. <clears throat> All right. If it's not mistaken, this last one, um, Somebody was getting moved or changed or moved up to another category. Am I right about that? 
And what was the pay we were giving them? I think I asked that last time. Bill number 6117, uh, this is a trailing bill to the uh, ordinance, uh, to the budget ordinance, which uh, had some uh, changes in some uh, position classifications and grades. Um, and as you correct, it was amended at the last meeting to deal with a uh, individual in the office of, uh, in the public works department that was, uh, had been approved for a upgrade by the personnel office and had not been, uh, the position had not been uh, upgraded as far as the budget, so you made the amendment to uh, increase the grade for that position, and I think the uh, dollar cost was six thousand uh, dollars. So they're at. So what is the salary now sitting at? Uh, I think it's in the. I believe the auditor's fiscal note uh, reported that. It just has the percentage. Right. I mean, it doesn't say the total salary. It doesn't say the total salary. I just had the dollar difference of the impact. Six thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. Added on to what's the salary? The uh, the salary uh, uh, one hundred eighteen thousand three hundred forty eight dollars. So now it's was one eighteen to one hundred twenty four thousand. Or is that 118 with the 6%? Because if that's it, I'm going to get me a job in the county. That's all I'm saying. Uh, so uh, what is that? Um, is that including that or no? Because what happens is they post these salaries in the newspaper, as you know. Right. And I'm telling you, what, when people see what people are getting paid, they get pretty hot. And I, and I don't blame them for getting hot. At least I can say something. The 118... 348 includes the approved salary increases that were part of the 2018 budget, the 2% cost of living adjustment, and the uh, uh, merit increase. Okay. Uh, the upgrade would generate another 5% uh, increase, and that's the $6,000. So it's 124. Right. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right. With that being said, any questions for the council? Okay, seeing none. We're going to open the public hearing on 6117. Anybody want to chime in? Okay, seeing no movement to close the public hearing on 6117 as amended. Uh, let's see. Um, Madam Secretary, please read a title of Bill number 6117 as amended. Bill number 6117 is amended, an ordinance concerning personnel positions in the classified service. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on Bill number 5917 as amended. Mr. Prusky. Aye. Mr. Peruka. Yeah, you said the wrong 61. number. 61. So, well, that's because someone typed it wrong on my sheet. <laughs> so let me repeat it. Oh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on Bill number 6117 as amended. My mistake. Mr. Prusky. Aye. Was aye. Mr. Peruka. Aye. Mr. Trumbauer. Aye. Mr. Walker? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Fink? Aye. Mr. Grasso? Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Bill number 6117 is amended, is passed. See, in reality, I really did that to see if anybody was paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Good bailout, right? Madam Secretary, please read a title of Bill number 6417 is amended. Bill number 6417 is amended, an ordinance concerning zoning, accessory structures, sheds, garages, and similar structures. There we go. This is Mr. Walker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, don't really have anything else to uh, add to this one. I think uh, we amended it last time to accommodate a request made by the Office of Law and Planning and Zoning, and I'm fine with the bill and hope you'll support it. For Administration? Uh, again, as Mr. Walker said, you heard this at the last meeting, uh, Lori Rose from Planning and Zoning and Greg Swain from the Office of Law are here to answer any questions you may have. Mr. Chair. Mr. Uh, Trubauer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Hammond, can you remind me if the administration supports the bill? The county executive supports the bill. Thank you. Okay. With that being said, open up public hearing on 6417. Anybody want to chime in? Seeing no movement in the crowd. Closing public hearing on 6417. Madam Secretary, please read the title of 6417 as amended. Bill number 6417 is amended. An ordinance concerning zoning, accessory structures, sheds, garages, and similar structures. Any discussion on the council? Seeing no movement. Madam Secretary, please call the roll on bill number 6417 as amended. Mr. Prusky. Aye. Mr. Peruka. Aye. Mr. Trombauer. Aye. Mr. Walker. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Fink. Aye. Mr. Grasso. All right. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Bill number 6417 is passed. Madam Secretary, please read the title of bill number 6517. 
Bill number 6517, an ordinance concerning Office of Planning and Zoning and Department of Inspections and Permits, reorganization of duties and responsibilities. All right, and we have Mr. Saldano, Mr. Kane, and Mr. Swain. The Magnificent Three. Go ahead. You like that? I was short from saying something else, but I'm going to keep it clean. <laughs> no. <laughs> Go ahead. Mr. Saldano, this is your deal. You have anything to say? I think Mr. introduced us. I think Mr. Kane indicated it. It's like that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> introduced it. Dan right, Kane, I'll, inspection I'll wanna, permits. I want to know who was Curly and who was Mo. That's all I want to know. All right, with that being said, uh, we're going to open up the public hearing on 65-17. Anybody want to chime in? Seeing no movement in the crowd, we're going to close the public hearing on 6517. Madam Secretary, please read the title of Bill number 6517. Bill number 6517, an ordinance concerning Office of Planning and Zoning and Department of Inspections and Permits, reorganization of duties and responsibilities. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, yeah. I just want to put on record that Mr. Kane's testimony is what brought my support for this bill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got that. Any other discussion? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on Bill Number 6517. Mr. Prusky. Aye. Mr. Peruka. Aye. Mr. Trumbauer. Aye. Mr. Walker. Aye. And Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Fink. Aye. And Mr. Grasso. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Bill Number 6517 is passed. All right, Madam Secretary, please read the title Resolution 2417. Okay. Resolution number 2417, resolution approving estimates of the annual costs of providing health insurance benefits and the employer subsidies used to determine the rates for certain participants under the county employee and retiree health benefits program. Got it. Okay. All right. Administration? Yeah, this is, this is the uh, annual... Uh, uh, resolution to deal with the uh, health insurance rates for uh, the next year. Uh, before you, you this evening, we have Ann Bukowski from the Office of Personnel, uh, Kelly Lovett from the Office of Law, and Jessica Lays uh, from the Budget Office to answer any questions. And I believe uh, Ms. Bukowski uh, has a little overview to give you on the uh, resolution. All right, bring it on. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Thank members you. of the Same Council. You. Ann Badowski, um, Assistant Personnel Officer. Um, I set forth in the code the resolution before you um, is to approve the annual cost estimates, the employer and employee subsidies for each of the health plans offered by the county to our employees and our retirees. Uh, you may recall that in January of 16, we implemented a new health insurance contract with Care First with an HMO, an EPO, and a triple option plan, and those are self-insured plans. We also implemented a fully insured Aetna Medicare Advantage plan for our over 65 retirees. Last year, we did come before you requesting that the 2017 health um, rates for employees remain the same as 2016, as we did not have a full year of claims data to review and make an assessment of our um, health rates. Um, <clears throat> the rates before you um, uh, reflect after two years of remaining flat that you will see a slight increase for our employees and our under 65 folks and a little bit of a larger increase um, in rates for our retirees in the Aetna plan. Um, just as an overall, just in the percentage, the higher percentage of the rate increase is due to prescription drug costs that are higher in our, in our claims data. Happy okay. to take any questions. Mr. Chair. Mr. Trumbauer. Thank you. Um, two, two quick questions. First, uh, I, think, I think it was today that I read a news story about Anne Arundel Medical Center, which is one of the major providers, or one of the major um, institutions in the county is no longer, well, preliminarily, <coughs> no longer going to accept Care First. And I heard you say that Care First was one of the plans offered. Does that have any impact on the ability of employees to find um, plans within the uh, constraints of, of their employee coverage, to your knowledge? We just learned of that story ourselves, yeah. and we are um, got calls into Care First to kind of have a better understanding. It would impact the doctors in in pocket versus out of pocket expense. So we are looking into okay, that but it, it wouldn't it interest. wouldn't have any effect on the rates that we're approving. No, it does not. It will. It's the, the providers who becomes in network versus out of network. Hmm. Okay. So if if a individual, if a county employee's uh, primary physician or healthcare provider. Uh, no longer took care first, they might have to find a different doctor, but their their rates would be the same. 
We only at this point offer care first um, plans. Yeah. So unless there was an RFP that was put forth on the to um, fourth to gather different health plans at this point, yes, they'd have to find a different doctor. <clears throat> okay. But we will find out from Care First. We're still researching the issues, so I don't have any. Can you? Um, I mean, I'm certainly interested in this. I presume some of my colleagues are. Uh, can Can you just make a commitment to keep us posted on that process? Um, that would be great. Um, the second question I had escapes me, so I'll pass. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? All right. Thank you very much. We're going to open up the uh, public hearing on Resolution 2417. Anybody want to chime in? Seeing the movement in the crowd, close the public hearing on 2417. Madam Secretary, please read the title, Resolution Number 2417. Resolution Number 2417, Resolution Approving Estimates of the Annual Costs of Providing Health Insurance Benefits and the Employer Subsidies Used to Determine the Rates for Certain Participants Under the County Employee and Retiree Health Benefits Program. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, please call the roll in resolution number 2417. Mr. Prusky. Aye. Mr. Peruka. Aye. Mr. Trumbauer. Aye. Mr. Walker. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Fink. Aye. Mr. Grasso. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Resolution number 2417 is adopted. All right. All right, Madam Secretary, please read the title, Resolution Number 2717. Resolution Number 2717, Resolution Concerning a Petition to the Maryland Higher Education Commission for Anne Arundel County Community, for Anne Arundel Community College Funding. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a uh, resolution that uh, is required by uh, to get the county's endorsement of the uh, building project that uh, is going on at the, or hopefully will be going on soon at the community college for their uh, health science and um, uh, biology building. Maury Chapit from the uh, community college is here to uh, answer any questions you may have. Any questions from the council? Seeing none. Okay, we're going to open the public hearing on 2717. Anybody want to chime in from the public? Seeing no movement in the crowd, we'll close the public hearing on 2717. Madam Secretary, please read the title resolution number 2717. Resolution number 2717, resolution concerning a petition to the Maryland Higher Education Commission for Anne Arundel Community College funding. All righty. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, please call the roll in resolution number 2717. Mr. Prusky. Aye. Mr. Peruka. Nay. Mr. Trumbauer. Aye. Mr. Walker. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Fink. Aye. And Mr. Grasso. I want to be a rebel. Nay. Five in the affirmative, two in the negative. Amend uh, resolution number 2717 is adopted. Okay. With that being said, Madam Secretary, please read the title resolution 2817. Resolution number 2817, resolution approving the declaration of certain nice unimproved county-owned property so near good. Glen Heights Avenue in Glen Burnie, Maryland as surplus property. Man, it sounds like my neck of the woods. <laughs> Yeah, this we go uh, again. This this resolution and the uh, next uh, two resolutions uh, deal with uh, declaring certain properties uh, surplus, so that we can move into the uh, second phase of the process uh, that would allow for uh, disposition of, of the sale of the uh, of the property. Okay. Now you know what I'm going to start with this thing. Let's talk about Glen Burnie. How big a piece of property were we talking about over here? It's um, 0 0.10 acre. 0. 0.10. These are non-buildable properties in which there could not be anything built on them. Okay, so this, and we always ask this question, this property adjacent to another piece of property doesn't change the density or it allows someone to increase something by giving them a little bit extra? No, it's um, a triangular property um, and it may be of interest to the adjacent owner, but that's it. They may be able to put a shed on it, but that's about it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the property, how big a property do they have that's next to it? Um, actually, I don't have that with me. I don't have that with me, but this one is equivalent to 400 square feet. 400 square feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to roll the dice on this big one. Big shed, big shed. Big first shed, right. Okay, would that be anybody questions? Nope, seeing none. We're going to open up the public hearing. Uh, what's the, uh, there's two more properties, correct? Yes. Glen Burnie again? One more is Glen Burnie. Here we go. I knew it was, I knew it was coming. <laughs> uh, I can see it. They're going to see it. 
We're going to live in the trees shortly. There ain't going to be nowhere to live. So go ahead. How big is this piece of property? Um, this one, actually, I'm sorry. It's in uh, Milledgeville. It's 0.043 acres. 0.043 acres. Point, point of order, Mr. No, Chair. We're, oh, oh, we're doing Hold one second. Right? We're, we're still in the, the process of talking about these two pieces of property that are in my area. So, well, wait a minute. There, okay, my bad. My bad. 2817, okay, is another one, and we'll come to the next one. Okay. Don't beat me up. I'm okay. All right. With that being said, anybody else? Okay, we're going to open up public hearing on 2817. Anybody want to chime in? Here comes Ms. Johnson. Julie Johnson, P.O. Box 6634, Annapolis, Maryland. I would really urge anybody who um, lives anywhere near Glen Heights Avenue and Glen Burnie to try to find the location of this property, take a look at it, and make your assessment of how a potential buyer might use this. Because in my experience in the past, there have been some uh, rather remarkable things that happened. Uh, here in Annapolis, the, at the intersection of Chinkapin Round Road and um, Aris T. Allen Boulevard and um, Forest Drive, there is a suite of uh, uh, an office um, condominium that was acquired through surplus property. Uh, there are any number of water access areas that were have, you know, where the road went to the water, and um, one of these is located directly across from the Naval Academy property. Um, and this was declared surplus because nobody could think of any possible use for a road that would go right straight to the water because nobody would want to use a car to carry a kayak or anything down to the water. Um, and this was all done in, in a way so that, now, in those days, you know, the announcements were really oblique and nobody could really make sense out of it, even if you knew where it was. Um, Mr. Phipps mentioned that his organization is really trying to do a better job of announcing these things and getting the information out. But um, I really do urge you to follow Mr. Grasso's concern about what is going to be created or what is going to be obstructed by these kinds of conveyances. Sometimes it's perfectly you know, you know, okay, but vigilance is really important. Thank you. Thank you. you know, supervise your government. Okay, that's very good. All right, we're going to close the public hearing on 2817. All right, Madam Secretary, please read the title of resolution number 2817. Resolution number 2817. Resolution approving the declaration of certain unimproved county-owned property near Glen Heights Avenue in Glen Burnie, Maryland as surplus property. All right, any discussion? Seeing none. All right, there is an amendment, so Madam Secretary, please read amendment number one. This amendment clarifies and specifies the requirements for disposing of non-buildable county-owned property by private disposition. Move to adopt. I'll second. Any discussion? Okay, uh, administration, nobody's got any questions. Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number one. Mr. Pruski. Aye. Mr. Peruka. Aye. Mr. Trumbauer. Aye. Mr. Walker. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Fink. Aye. And Mr. Grasso. Aye. Seven the affirmative, none of the negative. Amendment number one is adopted. Okay. Madam Secretary, please read the title resolution number 2917. We can vote on it. We just did. Oh, that's right. My mistake. I'm losing it tonight. Madam Secretary, please call the roll on resolution number 2817. Mr. Pruski. Aye. Mr. Peruka. I'm sorry. Aye. Mr. Trumbauer? Aye. Mr. Walker? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Fink? Aye. Mr. Grasso? Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Resolution number 2817 is amended as adopted. Madam Secretary, please read a title. Resolution 2917. Resolution number 2917, resolution approving the declaration of certain unimproved county-owned property on Veterans Highway in Millersville, Maryland, as surplus property. Okay. What we got again? This um, acre, this is 0.043 acres located. 0.43. So 0.043 little... acres is about 1,800. 0.04. Yes, it's about 1,800 square feet. Okay. Again, that's non-buildable as well. Non-buildable, mm -hmm. and it's not, and it, it's attached to another uh, another person's property. Yes. Yes. Okay. And do you know anything about the other property that's right next to it? It's just another. It's a bunch of houses in that area. Can I believe that there's a map in there? Madam Auditor. 
Yeah, I just wanted to add, since this seems to be a topic that comes up, the, net, the property adjacent to it is vacant and it's for sale right now. And I just, since uh, this question is asked frequently, adding this slice of property to that property, does it change in any way what can be built on that property, mm -hmm. the larger property? No, it doesn't. Okay. Just. Okay, so it looks like, it looks like looking at this aerial photo, that it's probably going to go commercial because based on the highway right here and everything that's right here, so it doesn't look like you're going to put any more put any houses there. But then they put houses on cliffs in California, so why not here? Okay, I'm all right with this. All right, any uh, we're going to open up the public hearing on 29:17. Anybody want to chime in? Seeing no movement, close the public hearing on 29:17. Okay, we have an amendment on this. Madam Secretary, please read the amendment 29:17. I'm going to read the resolution first for vote. Okay, that sounds nice. Resolution number 2917, resolution approving the declaration of certain unimproved county-owned property on Veterans Highway in Millersville, Maryland, as surplus property. All right. All right, so uh, motion to adopt. So moved. Okay. okay, sounds good. I think it's pretty much self-explanatory. It looks like it's... Just gonna read it. I'm gonna read I got it. Good. Amendment number one. This amendment clarifies and specifies the requirements for disposing of non-buildable county-owned property by private disposition. So now don't we need to move to adopt? Can we preemptively move to adopt? Yeah. We'll go ahead and we'll move to adopt. Let's do it. I'll second it, Mr. So Got it. Okay. We moved and adopted the heck out of this amendment. <laughs> Ain't that sweet? <laughs> Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number one. Mr. Prusky. Aye. Mr. Peruca. Aye. Mr. Trumbauer? Aye. Mr. Walker? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Fink? Aye. Mr. Grasso? Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Amendment number one is adopted. Okay, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on resolution number 2917 as amended. Mr. Prusky? Aye. Mr. Peruca? Aye. Mr. Trumbauer? Aye. Mr. Walker? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Fink? Aye. Mr. Grasso. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Resolution number 2917, as adopted, as amended, is adopted. How about that? Madam Secretary, please read a title resolution number 3017. Resolution number 3017, resolution approving the declaration of certain unimproved county-owned property on the corner of Fiorenza Drive and Mount Zion Marlboro Road in Lothian, Maryland, as surplus property. Okay, it's Mr. Walker. Well, it's not my... Lothian's not you? No, I mean, it's my area, but it's not my... Okay, got it. Yeah, I'll just... Go ahead. It's a 0.040-acre um, triangle property right next to someone's house. It will probably only be useful to that resident. Okay. Mr. Walker, did you have anything? Did they request it to be surplus, or...? They did not. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? We're going to open up the uh, public hearing on Resolution 3017. Anybody want to chime in? Seeing no movement in the crowd, close the public hearing on 3017. Madam Secretary, please read resolution number 3017. Resolution number 3017, resolution approving the declaration of certain unimproved county-owned property on the corner of Fiorenza Drive and Mount Zion Marlboro Road in Lothian, Maryland as surplus property. Any discussion? Seeing none. Okay, we have an amendment on this one. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number one. Amendment number one, this amendment clarifies and specifies the requirements for disposing of non-buildable county-owned property by private disposition. Motion to adopt. So moved. Mr. Chair. Second. Boy, that was like an echo over there, wasn't it? Okay. Any discussion? Anybody got anything to say? Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number one. Mr. Prusky. Aye. Mr. Peruca. Aye. Mr. Trumbauer. Aye. Mr. Walker. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Fink. Aye. Mr. Grasso. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Amendment number one is adopted. Madam Secretary, please call the roll on resolution number 3017. Mr. Prusky. Aye. Mr. Peruca. Aye. Mr. Trumbauer. Aye. Mr. Walker. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Fink. Aye. Mr. Grasso. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Uh, resolution 3017, as amended, is adopted. Coming down the home stretch. Madam Secretary, please read a title, Resolution 3117. 
Resolution number 3117, resolution urging the Federal Aviation Administration to modify flight plans and elevations imposed by next-gen air transportation system to pre-next-gen paths and to place warnings in the automated terminal information system to ensure pilots comply with required altitude during their approach to Baltimore Washington Marshall International Airport. Well, that was a mouthful, wasn't it? <laughs> Mr. Chair. Mr. Trumbauer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is my resolution along with um, a good number of co-sponsors, so thank you, gentlemen. Uh, just as a quick primer, um, probably several of you at least have gotten constituent contacts that um, sometime in the not distant past, the Federal Administration, Air Administration um, changed the flight patterns to BWI Airport. Uh, as most of us know, there is a BWI impact area that was set up some time ago, but these new flight patterns are uh, impacting communities that had not previously had to deal with airport noise. And so there's some confusion and concern among these communities. Um, and there has been a uh, process set up with some uh, community meetings or um, forums where um, representatives, I think, from FAA or some branch of the federal government have been trying to get input, but um, nothing has moved very quickly. So I got interested in this issue and I found out that several of our neighboring jurisdictions um, have taken some action, uh, specifically Howard County Council passed uh, legislation that would allow their county um, to take legal action against the FAA to try and uh, modify the flight patterns. Uh, I approached our Office of Law to see if that was possible for Anne Arundel and I was told that our charter would not allow that. Um, so I posted into some other, poked around to see if I could find some other legislative actions, um, but the only thing that uh, appeared to me to be within our purview was to weigh in via a public resolution. And I'll also note that uh, the governor of Maryland, um, Governor Hogan, has sent a letter to the FAA, uh, as well as a majority of our congressional delegation uh, has also weighed in, and uh, my memory is escaping me, but I think uh, some state legislators have uh, weighed in on this as well. But the intent of this is just add to the, um, I guess, burden to, to put on FAA to, to not only justify their new flight paths, but hopefully to accommodate the affected uh, citizenry that has um, been uh, having to deal with the consequences of this. Um, so I'd appreciate it if this body could weigh in um, what the what the resolution asked for is that the FAA either uh, revert back to the old flight path or um, modify them to a way that has less community impacts. Uh, and there's been several residents that have approached me that have <clears throat> ideas on, on what that might look like. So with that, I see we have some, uh, Ramon, I think, is here to say something for the administration. I appreciate your, uh, your comments, too. Thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, no problem. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of council. I'm Ramon Robinson, and I'm talking about airplanes, not transit or transportation this evening. So the county executive supports resolution number 3117. I think since from the brief overview that Councilman Trumbauer has given since early last year, a number of communities um, including Pasadena, Severn, Hanover, Severna Park, and Millersville. In addition to the residents in, surround, the residents in Anne Arundel County and in surrounding counties, along with major cities nationwide, have been filing complaints about airport noise associated with the next-gen air transportation system. So in October of 2016, the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, held a meeting to address the community concerns. The meeting led to FAA coordinating with the Maryland Aviation Administration, MAA, to establish a community roundtable on airport noise. The community roundtable is comprised of representatives from many of the communities that surround the Baltimore Washington International Airport, BWI. This roundtable is put in place to discuss the issues with BWI, with MAA, and with FAA officials. The Community Roundtable is an initiative of MAA at the request of FAA to be responsible for the following. To monitor procedures established by FAA for the DC Metroplex, to identify different alternatives as it relates to routings and procedures, to evaluate the environmental effects of possible route changes, which ultimately serves as a public forum for the issues and concerns regarding next-gen air transportation system for the citizens. That's a mouthful. To date, 
The letter of correspondence, there to date, letters of correspondence have been sent to FAA from the county executive on April 7th, 2017, from the Maryland governor, Larry Hogan, on May 11th, 2017, to the FAA indicating that next-gen flight patterns negative, are negatively impacting the quality of life of a growing number of community residents and ask them to reevaluate the program. This resolution serves as a clear clarification of the county position on taking the necessary steps to address community concerns regarding next-gen air transportation system. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Pruski. Yes, I would like to be added as a co-sponsor. Okay. Thank you. I accept your addition, Mr. Pruski, with open arms. Okay, with that being said, Anybody else want to say anything? We're going to open a public hearing up on 3117. Come on down. John, we have a sign up yep. sheet. No, I just got to, I think I got to find it. And Ms. Tate just put it over here. Okay, so it looks uh we have um, Ms. Linda Curry. Curry. Okay, Mary Reese, yes. Ms. Lance Brasher, and Ms. Ivan Brasher. Reese. Right? So okay. let's start off with. Um, Did you sign up? Yes. Linda Curry, is it? Yes. Okay, thanks for coming out tonight, ma'am. Yes. In two minutes, name and address, please, and you're ready to go. I'd like to state also that three of us are on the BWI roundtable, mm -hmm. all okay. three of us. Uh, it's Linda Curry, 707 Cottonwood Drive, Severna Park. I am an alternate on the BWI Roundtable. I'm also the chair for the BWI Noise Coalition. I'm in favor of this resolution, but would like to offer two thoughts. First, I regularly attend the BWI Roundtable meetings as an alternate. The impact from the implementation of the next-gen system has been devastating to Anne Arundel and Howard counties, who share the blunt of the airport traffic. In the roundtable meetings, the FAA mainly focuses on the departures in Howard County and recently presented possible solutions for them. It should be noted that Howard County Council has also passed a resolution to take legal action against the FAA. For the arrivals on the Anne Arundel County side, the FAA said has decided no corrective action is necessary. We feel the lack of legal action may have played a part in that decision. Many in Anne Arundel County, including myself, want the County Council to join with Howard and Montgomery County and the Maryland General Assembly in considering legal action against the, M the FAA. Secondly, Congress gave the FAA the authority to implement the next-gen system in the FAA, Mo FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012. They have, in subsequent acts, continued to allow the FAA to make changes without public forums or in environmental studies. Because Congress is ultimately responsible for the action of the FAA, it falls upon them to correct the situation. I'm asking that the council contact all of our federal legislators to show their support for their efforts and encourage them to include verbiage in the current FAA Reauthorization Act to protect the rights of those affected by the actions of the FAA. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Okay. Mr. Walker. Uh, do you know how our delegation voted on that? I'm sorry? How our congressmen or senators voted? Just curious. Um, voted you said they on voted on this the issue vote is multiple times? I'm sorry? I believe they, it, the vote is going to be in September. Oh, it's going to be in September. The, right. the bill um, comes up again for vote in September, so they're currently work, working on it. There's a House bill and a Senate bill. Right. The House bill includes verbiage that, that has protections for us and, any, well, all over the country for the noise issues, mm -hmm. for um, doing studies to find out what kind of health impacts it has. Mm -hmm. Um, there are quite a few of them. Eleanor uh, Holmes introduced some of them, and there are others that have introduced others, too. But the House bill has mostly what we want, but it also includes the information about privatization, where the Senate bill has none of what we're asking for as far as um, uh, things in there to protect the community and make the FAA more um, responsible for what's going on. Mm -hmm. The Senate bill doesn't really cover any of that. Okay. So we're hoping that somewhere in there, because they're going to have to make, you know, sure. meld these two together, kind of, yeah. that they're going to include what we're asking for. And it's not just us. Right now, most of us, most of the coalitions um, around the country, and I'm talking to quite a few of them, are um, working on letters to go to their legislators saying that we need to have this verbiage in there. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was asking if you guys could encourage them and let them know that you're, you're totally behind it. I'd be honest with you. I would like to tell the people that I'm, I'm talking to that the Anne Arundel County Council is doing something and is involved because they don't really feel like you are. 
and I keep defending you saying, I know they're working on things, I know they've talked to Howard County, but I don't have anything I can put my hand on and show them that it says that. Well, now you will. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Very helpful. Very helpful. Sounds good. Thank you. And I think you already reached out and emailed my office as yes, well. I, I think you emailed me directly, and I think I'm going to set up a meeting with you. To That'd be great. So, yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, Mary Reese? Yeah, hi. Thanks for coming to see you us tonight. My clues for sure. So I'm Mary Reese, and I live at 2707 Willow Hill Road. English. Oh, okay. Um, so I uh, represent District 30, Legislative District 30 on the round table. So I've sat a number of those meetings with the FAA. And I think at this point, um, we are proceeding in good faith that the FAA really intends to work with us and, and listen to um, the, the problems that this has caused. Uh, we've had a lot of public input at these roundtables, but um, I'm concerned with some of the, the wording in this bill. They seem to like to focus on loopholes. Um, when we start suggesting fixes to the problem, it, it can hurt us. We have intent, we've said all along, we've maintained as a roundtable that the FAA did this and it's their job to fix it. And we can't become aviation experts overnight and suggest changes and then have them come back and tell us, well, we, we liked your changes, we tried it and it's not gonna work. Sorry, we did the best we can and then we're all out of luck. Um, so I'm concerned with the language where you said um, that they're gonna use the ATIS to determine appropriate altitude or appropriate altitudes will be determined. Um, I mean, what is an appropriate altitude? And I think that type of wording can be um, sticky for us to get into with the FAA. I've, I've seen how they've done it in the round tables. We really shouldn't be suggesting anything to them about using an ATIS system, which by the way, has no procedural effect at all. So I don't know where this came from. Um, maybe without a pilot expert especially, or somebody to talk to, this, this can be dangerous. So I think we shouldn't suggest um, fixes, we should ask them to come to us with possible solutions, give us a proper period of time to evaluate that, and then s and fix the problem that way. Sounds good. Thanks so much. <coughs> and we have um, Brasher. Uh, he had to leave. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, it, he had to depart early. Okay. Sorry. You want to uh, get a get your name, sir? You Evan, spot. Evan Reese. All right, uh, and address, please. 2707 Willow Hill Road. Thanks for coming out and visit us tonight. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, just to echo what my wife said, uh, we applaud the council's efforts with this resolution. Thank you very much for introducing it. Um, we are concerned, though, with uh, the, uh, the language in it to some of it. Please keep it broader uh, and more of just putting it in the FAA's ballpark to fix this. Uh, I am a pilot expert. I'm a subject matter expert. I've been a contractor for the Navy, flown for the Navy for 15 years. Uh, none of us have the expertise to fix this. So thank you for the resolution. Can we not suggest solutions to the FA and allow them to just do their job and fix the problem they created? Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Reese. Mr. Schumbauer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So th thank you for bringing that concern to our attention. So just so I'm clear, uh, what, what you're advocating for as far as a change to this resolution is um, at the very end in the resolved in the resolved paragraph, you don't want a reference to the automated terminal information system? Correct, and line 33, whereas the county council further urges the FAA to take immediate steps to ensure pilots maintain appropriate altitude and flight path through warnings in the ATIS system. Uh, it, it gets into technicalities of what a pilot is legally obligated to and what is an informative system versus so you, a procedure. So, you, so you'd like, your preference is to strike the whereas clause that starts on line 33. Strike it, meaning delete it, yes. and then and then strike the reference on the second page um, to the ATIS system as well. Yes, just because again the technical expertise, we're offering a solution for the FAA to say, well, we can't listen to your resolution or do anything about it because we can't do this one thing, right. and that's what they've been doing to gotcha. the roundtable. So. Um, so here's so my friends on the council. Here's the issue: we're about to go into August recess. So if we hold this to work on an amendment, it'll be September 5th before we can pass this. Do you? Is there any urgency that you feel that we should pass this before September 5th? No, and and that system, by the way, is is somewhat like. Um, 
the 511 number you can call when you're driving down the highway to find sure. out what the traffic and the, and the air and the weather conditions are. The air traffic controllers control the pilots on what altitude they're at. This this is of no consequence to them. It's not something they're required to listen to. They don't even have to turn into it if they don't want to. Right, but you. Uh, I guess what I'm asking is, if we pass this resolution tonight, it goes in, you know, th then that's right. our statement. Is there a reason why the council weighing in now rather than essentially waiting a month and a half because we have an August recess if we, we, we'd need to do an amendment and then vote on it in September so we'd lose a month and a half. Is there any consequence of that in terms of your advocacy on the round table and talking to the FA that you're aware of? I don't think so. I I, really I don't, don't think, think so, so either. Um, but did, you did say that you're not going to be able to do anything as far as pass or add something to it. That we can't. It, you can't. We don't. I don't have an amendment ready. Gotcha. Okay. And I could ask staff okay. to draft an amendment right now we and ask time. everybody to time. wait ten minutes while we did it. But right? that's the way. I'd prefer not to do that because <laughs> sure. that's right. how mistakes happen. <laughs> right. Um, and if there's no burning level of urgency, no. I'd say I appreciate the concern. I'll. I'll get an amendment ready. We'll pass this resolution the first meeting in September. I think it's far better to be safe than to give okay. them something they might okay. find on. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so I'm having a motion to hold. A motion to hold, Mr. Second. Chair. All right, got it. Madam Secretary, please call the roll on a motion to hold uh, 3117. Mr. Prusky. Aye. Mr. Peruka. Aye. Mr. Trumbauer. Aye. Mr. Walker. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Fink. Aye. Mr. Grasso. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. The motion to hold the vote on resolution number 3117 is passed. All right. Is there any other business to draw before the county council? Move to adjourn, Mr. All right. right. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Down to council. System recess for the month of August and is adjourned until September 5th. Happy vacation.